Sometimes. Amen. I, uh, I heard someone not too long ago when they said it was good to see you, and it was a preacher, it was so good to see you, and he said it's good to be seen and not viewed. <laughs> good to be seen and not viewed. <laughs> Amen. But it, it's, 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 so, it's so good. to be. It's, it's an honor to be here with you fine folks. Um, the Bible says to give honor where honor is due, and I want to do that. Jeremiah speaks of God giving us pastors after his heart to guide us with knowledge and understanding. You are blessed with your pastor and first lady. Amen. I love the Wisnet family. Um, Obviously, mission-minded. What you do here is going around the world in so many different ways. And the fact that you would share your pastor um, to the world is commendable. Amen. And may God bless you and continue to bless you. But again, thank you for your hospitality. I I honor you fine folks, people of like precious faith. Now, typically, typically, I I don't preach the same message back to back. Typically. Typically. And that means by I say typically that I'm going to preach the same message back to back. Amen. So if you're online and heard the one in in Woodland and uh, ditto. It's all good. It's, it's all good. I hope. Amen. It, it, it's all good. But I want the word of God to, to speak to us today. I, I uh, in Texas, I, I preach there at church, and, and they, they don't have daughter churches or sister churches. Uh, First Church Woodland, First Church Vacaville, they have back-to-back services. And, and I, I remember going there for the first time thinking I was going to actually preach two different messages and the, and the pastor of that church told me I want the same message I said okay you the boss you the boss he said I want the same because he said I want the people on the same page and I'm going to tell you what's, what's interesting is that synergy is different synergy is different and it has to do with people and, and oftentimes it's it's the Holy Ghost moving the synergy between the the podium and the and the pew, the preacher and the people is 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 huge. But after having the music set the tone and the atmosphere, amen. Oftentimes it is the response. It is the response of people to the preached word of God that often determines how God will respond to us. Respond to us in the service. You take two glass jars, you can lay or set one down, top open, the other one upside down. And if you were to pour a pitcher of water over the two, which of the two would receive the water? It would be the one who's open. And I say that because we have to have a certain openness when it comes to the preaching of God's Word. There's there's no one that can force it, no one that can obligate it it's it's something that we do that we open ourselves up to what god wants to do and basically say your will be done in my life in this service today whatever you want but i'll say this much god does want to speak to us god wants to touch us god wants to bless us he said i, I you know I, I love it when someone says you do you bless somebody may god bless you i am blessed uh, i'm blessed thank you well god wants to bless you more how's that sound because I'll take all the blessings that God will give me. I'm not, I'm not turning off the water faucet. I'm telling you that right now. Amen. My, 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 my vessel is still wide open for whatever God has in store for me. Amen. I say, God, pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out upon my life. Pour it out upon this service. Pour it out on the lives of people. God loves you. Hear me. God loves every one of us in this place today. God wants to bless us. It is the will of God that we be blessed before we leave this place today. And and if you've been responding to what God has done so far, you're already blessed. But may God bless you more. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. And oftentimes we'll say that's that's the the, the Holy Ghost. And, and that is. It is. But I believe it's much more than that. And whatever abundant life that God wants to give us is the abundant life that I want. I I, I want to live the abundant life. But let me say it again. God loves you. 
God loves me in spite of me. God loves you in spite of you. Because in reality, that's the only way He can love us. But aren't you glad He looked beyond your faults and your hang-ups and your inconsistencies and your shortcomings and your fumblings and your mess-ups and says, I love you, I love you, I love you. That's the God we serve. That's the God I serve. Are you ready for some preaching? So if you'll turn with me to the book of Matthew, the third chapter, while you're standing. Matthew 3, verse 11. John the Baptist says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, speaking of Jesus, is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Lord, we ask that you move in this place. We are already grateful for what you have done here today. And Lord, we know that you have much for us. God, I pray, Lord, that you would increase our capacity to whatever it is that you have for us in this service today. God, we need you. There's no question, God. We all need you. We're needy people, God. We have needs. We have wants and we have desires, God. We pray, Lord, God, that you would answer answer our, our prayer today. It's one of faith, God, that you would speak to our hearts. And let us leave here today, God, with a fresh assurance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. And you may be seated. God bless you. God bless you. It's kind of interesting. I, I'm going to be 64 in June, and uh, I, I know I don't look a day over whatever comes to your mind. I don't. <laughs> How do I look for 80? <laughs> I look great for 80, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and and. I'm finding that that if I did everything that my mind tells me to do, that my my body's going to tell on me, and it's going to it, it's going to feel it afterwards. Because in my mind, I still feel young. And uh, I remember when we were in Sanger, and we had we had the morning service, and then we had the the night service. And uh, if I remember correctly, at night we started at six. In the morning, we start. In fact, we had early session. We called that the meat eater session for those who were wanting something more than just preaching, but wanted some teaching. And uh, then we kind of geared towards evangelistic uh, preaching at, at night, and and it worked. It worked. But there was there there was something about that afternoon nap between services that were amazing. I called it my power nap. Amen. Well, I didn't get a power nap today. Amen. And my, my, my brain is saying, yeah. <laughs> and my body is saying, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. So uh, I never dreamed I, I would. I, and I knew that I was going to get old at one time. I, I did. I knew I was going to. I just didn't realize it was going to be this quick. Amen. But you got to treat the young man good because you, it's going to be old one day. So amen. Praise God. Do you remember when, when uh, 30 sounded old and now, and now 40 sounds young? <laughs> Some of you are not there yet. So <laughs> So anyway, yeah, just hold on. If the Lord tarries, amen, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But in Matthew, the third chapter in verse 11, John the Baptist speaks of the promise of the Holy Ghost. And it was after the resurrection that Jesus spoke of this promise, the promise of the Holy Ghost, when he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. That promise was fulfilled in the book of Acts. And I like the way that the writer Luke describes it in Acts, the second chapter. He said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. I always welcome a sudden move of the Holy Ghost. It's always refreshing for God to move suddenly. 
And such it was here in Acts, the second chapter. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Ghost came as a sound of a rushing wind as God breathed upon those who had gathered in an upper room and about 120 experienced the reality of Pentecost. And I wonder what would happen today if we were of one mind. Again, going back to synergy. Synergy is powerful because everybody comes together not just in one place, but they come together in one spirit and in one mind. Things happen when people come together. Amen. I, I've seen things happen in a, a, a fantastic, marvelous ways when people make up their mind and become, become one in spirit and one in attitude. Amen. I'll tell you what would happen today if the wind of Pentecost was to blow and the Spirit of God was to suddenly move in this place. We would experience the reality of Pentecost. This is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Brother Garza today talked earlier that every Sunday ought to be Pentecost Sunday. Amen. It's not just once a year that we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And I don't know when you have your midweek service, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever it is. I really don't know. But we ought to have a Pentecost Wednesday also. Amen. There ought to be, a, there ought to be Pentecost every day of the week is my opinion today. Amen. But today is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. I want to experience the reality of Pentecost in this place today because that is the will of God. That is the will of God. But what is the reality of Pentecost? Amen. It's a number of things, but according to the prophet, it is the refreshing and the rest for the weary. Are you weary today? Are you weary today? Are you tired Get eight hours of sleep, but wake up and no rest. And the reason for that is because during the night, amen, while your body is asleep, your spirit is still wide awake and it's fighting. It's fighting, it's fighting the adversary. It's fighting the negative situations and circumstances that surround us. Pray for my voice. Amen. That, that surround us. Amen. Amen. It's continuing to fight. Let me say this because the scripture says this. And Jesus is speaking. He says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden and, and weary and heavy. And I will give you rest for my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I, I want to say with that that if you are carrying a heavy yoke, yoke or a hard yoke and you're, and you're carrying a heavy burden, you're under the wrong yoke because his yoke is easy and his burden is is light and it's time to get under the yoke of Jesus Christ where there's rest he said come alongside me it's the refreshing and the rest for the weary and according to the book of Acts it is the baptism of Holy Ghost power Jesus said you shall receive power after that, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you I believe that this service can be momentous a, a landmark service in the life of somebody in this place today. Amen. It doesn't have to be everybody, and I wish it would be, but all, all I need is one person today to say, I want God to do something in my life that's going to make the difference. Amen. I believe today this service can be a landmark service in your life. I'm talking about one of them services where you can look back and say, it was on that service or in that service on July the 5th that I experienced something, and I've never been the same since. Some, something can happen in this service, amen, that will change your life forever, amen. That would be the will of God. Wouldn't that be something that someone here today could walk out saying there was a difference made in my life in that service? What happened? I don't know. All I know is I opened my heart to the will of God and the word of God, and God touched me and changed my life, and I'm not the same. I, don't, I, just, I just can't think the same. I'm not walking the... God changed my life. 
that means we must experience Pentecost. Because it will make the difference in our singing. It will make a difference in our praising. It will make a difference in our worship. It will make a difference in our preaching. And it will make a difference in our response to preaching. Amen. We need the wind of Pentecost to blow. I said we need the wind of Pentecost to blow and breathe life into our services because when we gather and our guests come and our friends and family members, amen, come through the doors, amen, we don't need another dead, now I lay me down to sleep kind of service. But what we need is to experience a real demonstration of Holy Ghost, of Holy Ghost power. And so my proposal today is this. Let them experience the excitement of Pentecost. Let them see and feel for themselves a real demonstration of Holy Ghost power. But sometimes we are afraid to have a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And we're afraid because we don't want to frighten away our guests. And that is a possibility. A Holy Ghost demonstration just might frighten some people away. But in concern for, in concern for our guests, there have been times that we have resisted a moving of the Holy Ghost. We want to keep it proper. We want to keep it prim. We want to make sure everything's okay. Amen. Because we, we've got guests in the house and we, we, we don't want to frighten them away. Amen. But when it's all said and done, they still, amen, leave unchanged and we still don't reach them. So I say today, let them experience Pentecost and let them decide for themselves because if a real Pentecostal experience cannot change their lives, then nothing Nothing can and nothing will. And I make myself at home. Thank you, Brother Chase. Amen. I really feel like the Lord wants to do something in this place today. In fact, I ought to say it this way. I know that God wants to do something in this place today. There's some hungry people here today. There's some people with some needs in this place today. I don't know if everybody here today has the Holy Ghost or not. Amen. But today you can leave this place saying, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you can leave today saying, I got the Holy Ghost again. I got the Holy Ghost. Come on, we all need the Holy Ghost. We need it again and again and again. So let them experience the life-changing power of the Holy Ghost. Let's walk into this place expecting God to do it again. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. I said this earlier. Most of what I've said now I said earlier. Amen. But I said this earlier. If you come expecting nothing, don't be surprised if you get nothing. You want something? Start expecting something. Hello? Hello? Now, I, I don't know if this is proper, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. Lady finds herself, we say pregnant now. When I was growing up, we called it in the family way. <clears throat> uh, she, find, she gets the news, and she's, she's, like, she's like five weeks. She's five weeks pregnant. Not even showing yet, but she goes out and buys the maternity clothes. Before, they used to buy loose stuff. Now they buy the tight stuff. Why is that? Because they want everybody to know. Mm -hmm. I'm pregnant. I'm expecting. I'm expecting. I mean, they'll even, they'll even start walking with, you know, I mean, and they just, they just barely come along or they'll be holding, holding their belly, you know. Well, you, 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 you sick? No, 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 I'm expecting. I'm expecting something. I wonder what would happen in the Holy Ghost if we had some people here say it. I'm expecting something to happen 
I'm expecting something. You know why? Because if we come expecting something, we're going to give birth to something by the help and grace of God that's going to change our lives and change our situation. We'll walk out of this place saying, God, did it work in my life again? But you got to come expecting. you got to walk through the doors of this place saying, I expect God to do something in this place. Do it again. Do it again just like you did on the day of Pentecost. Do it again. Let them experience Pentecost. Mm, let them experience a life-changing power of God. Amen. Let's walk into this place believing God. Let's walk through the doors of this place with our minds made up. We're going to have good church as opposed to bad church. Amen. And we're not going to, I'm talking about this. This good church ought to be the normal around here. Amen. What kind of church did you what kind of church service did y'all have today? Well, we had no, no. We need to come expecting God to do something every time we come to the house of God. Because not only is today Pentecost Sunday, amen. But next week is Pentecost Sunday, and during the week, oh, come on, church. Can I get a witness in this place today? Mm. Really, there's no other way to have church than to have good church. Good church, good church. Let me ask you a question When was the last time that you had a good time in the Holy Ghost? When was the last time you celebrated the joy of your salvation? You just let go and let God. Let it rain. 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 Hey Amen. If, if anything needs rain, this, this state needs some rain. Hey Amen. We need a deluge of rain. Hey Amen. But also we need a deluge of Holy Ghost rain in our services. Hey Amen. I remember when I was in Sanger and I, I preached one time and I was talking about the rain. And I said, the next time it rains, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to stand in the rain. And I did. It was pouring down rain and I was standing out there. Let this be God, a sign of what's going on in the spirit realm. It's raining in the spirit realm. Let it rain in the natural realm too. We need God, amen, to pour out the Holy Ghost in the day and age that we're living in. We need God, amen, to shower down upon us like he did on the day of Pentecost. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. I say let's experience Pentecost because if we will experience Pentecost, they will experience the Holy Ghost. In Acts, the second chapter, it says, Now when they heard this, after Peter had preached, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? I'm going to quote a verse of scripture here that I, I know is familiar with your folks, with you folks, but let me quote it anyway. Then Peter said unto them, Then Peter said unto them, Then Peter said unto them, Repent! and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise there's that promise again for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call hear me if you want to experience Pentecost then experience Acts 2 38 While pastoring, I pastored some 25 years in Sanger. A lot of great experiences. Amen. But while I was pastoring in the city of Sanger, there, there was a certain church group that was upset with us. More specifically, one particular gentleman of that church group that was upset. And uh, basically... He said something like, we're always cramming Acts 2.38 down people's throats. And really, to be honest with you, that wasn't our intention. We were just preaching the word. I mean, when they asked Peter, what shall we do? I don't know what to tell you.
tell you, I was just, I was just, um, just repeating the words of, Amen, brother Peter there, Amen, and and he he told him he, he, he did. and so I were, really it wasn't our intentions to, to to make you think we're cramming anything down anybody's throat for that matter, and why you got upset because we were preaching the word. I really don't I don't know what to say. But a young man, a young man came and received the Holy Ghost, and most everybody in town knew him. And I walk slight, lightly here, Amen. Because in the back window of his car was this huge Raider emblem. It, it was a Sunday morning, not long after he received the Holy Ghost, that he took me out to the back of his car, and the Raider emblem was gone, and in its place. A huge in huge letters were the words "Obey Acts 2:38." They were capital letters, so that means loud. You know what it is when you text all caps. They're saying, "Quit shouting!" Because when you type all text, that's it. They're saying you're you're yelling at us. Amen. But in huge letters were the words, "Obey Acts 2:38." Amen. I'm gonna say that because, Amen. We're not trying to be offensive. We're really not. But there it is again in your face. And I have nothing against the Raiders. I promise you. I I don't have any particular franchise that I'm following. A following. But the point is this, that if you want to experience, amen, Pentecost, amen, then obey Acts 2 38, amen obey the word because guess where they're going to go when they want to receive the Holy Ghost they're going to go to a church where they can experience Pentecost, they're going to say if you want the Holy Ghost then you got to go to that church where they receive the Holy Ghost. And if you want to, if you want to receive and experience the miraculous, you got to go to that church. Amen. Where they believe in miracles. And if you want to be set free, you want to be set free from addiction. If you want to be set free from drugs and alcohol, then you got to go to that church that preach and believe in deliverance. Does anybody here today know what I'm talking about? Has anybody here today ever been delivered from some things in your life? that had you bound. Amen. But you're here today because one day, amen, in an old-fashioned altar, there was an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and God changed your life. Amen. God filled you with the Holy Ghost and you've never been the same since. I hope you all believe this kind of preaching. Do you all still believe in receiving the Holy Ghost around here? I got three amens. You still, you all still believe in receiving the Holy Ghost around here. I, I believe, I believe, and I'm just going to deviate for a moment, but I believe that the best preachers, uh, the best pastors uh, are able to see a little bit of themselves when they see someone walking down the aisle that needs the Lord. They see a little bit of themselves in that person because I once was like that. There were some things that I dealt with and that had a fight with that they with. I'm saying that because when we see people come into our midst, uh, don't forget where we came from. But it's amazing how quick we get amnesia. Amen. All of a sudden, we forgot where God brought us from. But if it wasn't for the mercy and the grace of God, where would we be today? But one day, He filled me with the Holy Ghost. One day, He touched my life. And I've never been the same. I've never been the same. I hope you all believe in baptisms because I just baptized this carpet. Amen. Amen. I'm glad it's water, not Dr. Pepper. <laughs> he's still able to set you free from sin and fear and shame and condemnation and guilt he still can set you free today and maybe you're here today and you might have some things plaguing your mind and your spirit and you're wondering God can you forgive me and God said just give me a chance let me just show you. I, I can. I can work. I can work a, a miracle in your situation. Just, just give me the chance. Just give me the opportunity. Thank you again, my brother. Thank you. 
It was during a, a sectional meeting there at Life Tabernacle. And uh, we, had, we had something like 80 young people receive the Holy Ghost and about 70 baptized in Jesus' name in a matter of about, I don't know, four, five, six weeks, whatever it was. And it was, it was, a, it was a powerful, powerful thing. Young people coming from high school and then turn around, bring someone else, and they would get the Holy Ghost. And it, it, it was, well, we were, man, we were busy, which was exciting. Amen. Praying folks through and, amen, baptizing them in Jesus' name. And it was after this particular meeting that I walked back because I saw some young people in the back. They were standing there in the back of the church, still in the pews, but standing there while God was moving throughout the service. And I walked back there and I greeted them and shook their hands and was walking away. And one of the young ladies says, well, I guess I'm untouchable, which... <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't know what she was talking about. She wasn't referring to me. And I said, well, but to make sure I asked her, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, I, I, I didn't feel anything and I didn't get the Holy Ghost. And my response to her was simply, in the name of Jesus. And I laid my hand on her, on her forehead. In the name of Jesus. And I watched as she grabbed the back of the pew. She was white knuckling the back of the pew, and then she began to shake, and she couldn't hold it any longer. And all of a sudden, she threw her hands, her hands up, Amen. As she felt the power of the Holy Ghost come down upon her, and I walked away from her, saying, "Don't you ever say that you're untouchable, Amen? Because God will touch you. He will. He will touch you. He, he will. Are you hearing me today? Don't ever say that you're untouchable, because God is saying, "I can touch you. I can make a difference in your life. I can change the situation." Amen, that you're going through. Your condition doesn't have to be permanent. I can touch you today. I can touch you. So once some of our young people invited the cheerleader from high school to service, and she let us know from the vet, right up front, from the very beginning of the service, that she didn't believe in all that speaking in tongue stuff. But that night, Charlene, the cheerleader. <laughs> Need I say more? I said, that night, Charlene, the cheerleader became Charlene the believer when God filled her with the Holy Ghost and she began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Does anybody here today know what I'm talking about? Have you already received the Holy Ghost? Have you already been to the water? Have you already been baptized? But that's why I'm saying let them experience Pentecost. Because they've tried the gang life. We were brand new. We were brand new in Sanger. My wife and I, we were, I mean, we were brand new. We lived in a little apartment. It was called Tangerine Hill Complex, but they changed the name to Chemical Hill. <clears throat> because of the drugs that were dealt there. That was the hood that I lived in. And uh, I remember one time Robert uh, Miedemontes came to me and they, we lived down here and up above on the second floor, just catty corner to our apartment was, was a, a group of young men. And I remember, I remember Robert later on coming to me and saying, saying uh, Pastor, I, I let anybody call me Pastor, it doesn't make any difference. He said, you mean you let them call you pastor? Yeah, because they call me pastor. That means I can probably have an influence in their life. That's, uh, yeah, that's, good. that's good. Pastor. That's good. I said, yeah, Robert. He goes, did you come here for us gangbangers? <laughs> I said, Robert, I, 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 if, if that's the reason why I'm here, then I'm here, brother. I'm, I'm here for, I'm here for who, who's, whosoever will. I'm, I'm, I'm here. Amen. It, it was Robert, and, and, and this is kind of a funny, humorous side note here, but it was Robert one day. My wife was in the kitchen, and, uh, and, and she was fixing some food. And so here's, here's the stove and the sink, and right here is a, a window that faced outside, and it had some Venetian blinds, and, and, and she's here, and all of a sudden we hear, pop, 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 
pop, someone hit the, 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 the window there. And, and, and so I go running to look out. And my wife said, no, 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 no. And I go looking out and I see Robert Mita, Mita, uh, Mita Montes, amen, running, running, down, running down the street chasing this van. And then he's, he's, that, he's that close to the van. And he's running and he's chasing. He comes back and he said, Pastor, I got their license plate. Call the police. Robert, the gangbanger, is wanting me to call the police. I said, what is it? He goes, go look at your car. And I went and looked at my car, and it was some young people from the church that, that were just having a little fun, did a little TP in, you know. So I had TP all over my car, and I had some of them for sale signs and little banders. And, and, I, and, I, and, and I said, well, I, I got yeah, that's what it was. And then and he, he said, call the cops. we got to call the police. But I said, that's all right. That's all right, Robert. He said, yeah, you can't do that to the preacher. <laughs> well, later on, later on, them young people came to me and apologized and said, Pastor, we, we're, we're sorry. Amen. But we thought that guy was going to get us. <laughs> we thought we got out of there. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. But anyway, we were getting ready for bed one night, and and there was a knock on the there was a knock on the door, and and again it was one of them situations because again the, the hood that we lived in, Amen. We didn't know what was going on, but it, I, you know I I'm not. To, to a lot of that stuff, okay, and praise God, hallelujah, and I look to the peak hole, and, and, and there's Oscar standing there, and, and I, 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 I told my wife, it's, I said, it's Oscar, I'm going to let him in, she goes, no, 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 don't let him in, I can see her in the bedroom, no, no, I said, hey, it's cool, I said, and I opened up the, opened up the door, and Oscar came in, and I said, come on in, Oscar, and Oscar came in, and, and he said, I had him sit down on the sofa, and he was sitting there, and he goes, pastor, he goes, preacher, he goes, I got this headache, I got this headache and it's driving me nuts. I can't get rid of it. I feel like my head's going to pop. And I just asked him, I said, I said, Oscar, have you been smoking PCP? Uh, yes, Pastor. Yeah. He uh, uh. said, well, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> I look back and I'm thinking, man, we do things so, so odd. I remember Oscar's there and he's sitting on my couch and I lay my hand hand on his head and I said, no, 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 Jesus. <laughs> I forgot about his headache. <laughs> Robert didn't forget about his headache. I said, God, touch Oscar today. Heal his head, God, and deliver him from, from drugs and deliver him from alcohol and gang life. And God, deliver him, Lord. Yes. Jesus' name. I said, well, Oscar, how do you feel? He goes, no, I'm not feeling too good. <laughs> he stands up, starts walking to the door. He said, but thanks. Anyway, preacher, he said, I, uh, I appreciate it. And he gets halfway to the door. I can still remember this. He turned around and said, preacher, it's gone. My headache is gone. My headache is gone. And Oscar came to Live Tabernacle and received the Holy Ghost. And I baptized him in Jesus' name. That's what I'm saying. Let them experience Pentecost. Let them experience because they've tried the drugs and the alcohol. They've tried the party scene. They've tried the illicit sex and perversion. They've even tried dead formal religion. But they're still not satisfied. So let them experience Pentecost. Let them experience the Holy Ghost. For change. Why don't we stand? As we come to the music. Acts 2 6 says, Now when they this was noised abroad, the multitude came. Now you saw how we did this earlier, so I'm gonna ask for your help today. We did this. Brother Lucas, I don't know if you're I know you're busy there. But you, you, you saw how we did this earlier, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to duplicate that and I'm gonna need your help and then we'll have different ones. Somebody heard the news. Somebody heard the commotion. 
Somebody heard the noise, came to see what was happening. And when they saw it, they went out and got somebody to bring with them. That's exactly what happened in Sanger. God began to move and touch hearts and lives. And best advertisement is word of mouth. And they started bringing them, bringing them one at a time, bringing them two at a time, three at a time, bringing them. And they get the Holy Ghost. The young man by the name of Josh. Josh was the son of a pastor in town. Not of our affiliation, but he was pastor, son of a pastor in town. And in fact, J- Josh's father was part of the church where Charlene, the cheerleader, used to attend. And so it might have been her that invited Josh. I don't know how it worked out, but Josh ended up in the altar. And I remember it was on this side. In fact, I remember walking over and I. I laid my hand on his head and I said, Josh, God wants to give you the Holy Ghost. You can have it today. And there was no, no will push or pull. And Josh just raised his hands and began talking in tongues. A short time later, one of the ushers came up to him and said, Pastor, um, Josh's dad is outside and wanting to pick up Josh. He's not supposed to be here. <clears throat> and so I remember walking to Josh and I said Josh uh, your dad's here he wants to pick you up and he just looked at me talking in tongues and I just took him by the arm and led him down the, the aisle and he's talking in tongues and I led him out the door and he's talking in tongues I walk over to the van and open the door and his dad's sitting there waiting he's talking in tongues and he gets into the passenger side and I close the door and Josh looks over at me and he's talking in tongues and Josh's dad drives on down the road. You might not explain everything that happens to you. You might not have all book, chapter, and verse, but one thing that you can never deny is an experience. You just know that you know that something happened in your life. Someone heard the news and said, come, come, come. He said, you, you got to see, you got to come see what's happening. Come with me. And they looked and they saw and God was moving and things were happening and they were, they were excited and said, we, we can't keep this to ourselves. We, we got to go tell somebody else. Go, go find somebody else and bring them with you and bring them back up here. Find somebody. Can you do that? Okay. Come, 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 come. See what's happening. God's moving. Holy Ghost is being poured out. Go tell our family, friends, neighbors about this. Go, go find somebody else. Can you do that? Go find, go find Brother Guy there and bring him up here. Okay. Find somebody. You got to, you got to, you got to bring them. You, you, you got to bring them. You got to come. Bring, bring him. Now, now go find somebody else. But the guy, get you, get fame. Bring somebody else. We, that's it, Brother Nichols. Come on in. And then, uh, Brother Nichols, go find somebody else. Bring somebody with you today. Come, the Holy Ghost is in this place today. Come, that's it. Come on, that's it. That's it. That's it. Hey, ben, bring them, bring them, bring them. Okay, well, we don't know. Did they come? Did they bring their family? Was it their family that they brought? Was it? Was it their friends? It was it. Was it their next door neighbor? Was it the entire neighborhood? But come, come, come today, because God wants to do a work. Amen. Somebody heard the news and said, "Come and see what's going on. Come and see what's happening." For the Bible says, "The promise is unto you." and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call is there anybody here today who wants the Holy Ghost it's for you is there anybody here today amen who wants a light change it's for you is there anybody here today who wants a healing it's for you today do you want to be renewed and restored do you want to be refreshed and revived amen it's for you because the promise the promise is for you and you and you and you and you 
the promise is for you because God loves you and God wants you to have all that you can expect out of life he wants to give you abundant life you're tired of being tired sick and tired of being sick and tired all you know is oh God oh God come on the Holy Ghost is here come on church help me raise some praise in this place today Open your heart. Open your heart today to what God wants to do in your life. That's it. Eyes closed. Heart open. Begin to praise the Lord. God, I gotta have you. I want you today. God, I want you today. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the presence of the Lord. The Spirit of God is here. Help me, church. Help me ministry. You know who you are. Pray with somebody. Pray with somebody. Pray believing that God wants to make a difference in their life.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Play softly. Play softly. There, there, there is a certain doctrine that has been floating around for many years. And, and, and that doctrine, that teaching is this, that if you've ever come to the Lord, you come to the Lord and receive the Holy Ghost and been baptized and you were to stray, backslide, walk away, that there is no hope for you. That is a lie. Hear me, that is a lie. I'll just start by saying this. I know it's a lie because I was one that strayed and went away. But here I stand today because of his forgiveness. I don't care where you've been, how far you've gone, what you've done. It doesn't make any difference to God. All you have to do and mean it from the bottom of your heart in the moment you mean it. God, forgive me. Because, sis, if God expects me to forgive, and he does, that's one of the things about being a Christian, we forgive. But if he requires me to forgive, in fact, Peter said this, he said, how many times should I forgive somebody who's offended me? Seven times, seven, 49 times? And Jesus said, no, no, seven times. Seven times, seven. 490 times. Which basically what the Lord is saying is, you forgive, and you forgive, and then you forgive, and then you forgive, and then you forgive. Because hear me, hear me. If he expects me to forgive, do you think he would do any less? Why would he require me to do something as a man that he won't do as God? So I come here today with some good news for somebody because maybe you're holding on to some guilt and some condemnation and some shame and you got things that you're dealing with and dealt with and you're thinking, I, I've, I'm too far gone for God, for God to ever, for God to ever forgive me. God to ever forgive me. I mentioned Brother Peter, who was the first apostolic preacher on the day of Pentecost. But I, I, I can tell you a time when he actually denied the Lord and then he cursed. But then when Jesus resurrects, he says to the disciples, go, go tell my disciples and Peter. He, he, he pointed out Peter, pulled him out, let him know, let him know that I am a God of a second chance. God of a third chance, fourth chance. I'm a God. Oh, come on. There's hope for us today. 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 And all you have to do is say, God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And the moment you mean it here is the moment he says, I forgive. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. If there's any leaving done, it's not him that leaves. We're the ones that do the leaving not him and if you want to know where to find him go back where you left him and you'll find him waiting on you